Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Welcome to my book review of J.D. Salinger's Nine Stories. This was originally published in 1953, though many of the stories were uh, written perhaps in the late 40s uh, and a few years prior, many of them appearing in The New Yorker, uh, but finally being collected into this book. Of these nine short stories, which I'll talk about uh, some of the impressions that I got, who I would recommend this book to, and why I read it. In fact, I will start off why I read it. Uh, recently, I did a book review for J.D. Salinger's book, Franny and Zooey. If you haven't watched that, please click the link up above. I read that because uh, it was recommended to me by one of my subscribers, Gabriel from France, who then went on to recommend this book, by, also by J.D. Salinger, Nine Stories. Um, and so if you have any books that you recommend, I just might give them a try. I did like Franny and Zooey, so I thought I would try this, and I'm very glad I did. In fact, I would even say that I like Nine Stories more than I like Franny and Zooey. Because with Franny and Zooey, you're sort of stuck with the Glass family, um, which is vaguely connected to some of the stories in this collection, Nine Stories. Uh, but many of the stories, I know I'm saying the word stories so often, please forgive me. Uh, many of the short stories in this uh this beautiful collection are just very diverse. So what I found was that sometimes uh, I would read one and I sort of enjoyed it. Some stories I really enjoyed and some stories haunted me. Um, I'll talk about some of the themes that come up uh, throughout all of them. One, which is uh, a lot of the stories are told from the perspective of children. Um, from young age, like 10 years old, in Teddy, the last story in the collection, to uh, adolescence, a 15-year-old tennis player, a lot of the stories are told from sort of an innocent, uh, naive, yet much more genuine type of human, the kid, who seems to be uh, contrasted with a lot of fake sort of cynical, bitter adulthood. Uh, some of the characters that you meet in these stories are people who are disillusioned about war. They, they are traumatized. They have trouble putting their, their, their thoughts together. There are some people who are disillusioned and bitter about the man that they married and they have not let go of the man that they could have married. You have some people um, who are fantastic storytellers who get groups of kids together and, and drive them out to the countryside to, to play rugged sports and yet fall to pieces uh, from the disaffection of a woman. Lots of different characters in these night stories. I think that's why I liked it so much. And all of the characters, even the ones I hated, uh, I just, I could feel part of, even the parts of their personality that I didn't like, I felt those feelings, or I've known people who, um, who reminded me of the characters that I was reading. And then, of course, uh, there are some really great characters, uh, and the way that they think, J.D. Salinger, he, he made me feel like a kid again, and I remember how wonderful it was to have those raw pure, honest emotions contrasted with that sort of, um, you know, what we get out of, ha after having an education and being socialized, sometimes we lose that magic spark that we have as kids. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense to you. Anyways, it's, it's kind of difficult to talk about these because I just finished him yesterday and uh, I read it over the course of a couple weeks. Took me a long time, even though it shouldn't take you a long time. Um, I just was busy recently. The stories read pretty quickly. They're, they're, if you don't like one, I would say hang on and keep going because uh, some are better than others and some might, like the first one I, I wasn't crazy about. Uh, it, it ended really bleakly, really, you know, I'm not gonna spoil it. Uh, but the first one in that, uh, something about a banana fish, I believe it is uh, J.D. Salinger's most critically acclaimed of all of the stories, but it was the one I think I liked the least. Uh, it was really, really a downer, you know? And I was reading this uh, 
at my middle school where I'm supposed to be an upper to these kids and it just, it was, it was tough to read. Um, whereas, you know, one of the stories that I believe wasn't very successful was about a, a very narcissistic uh, art, uh, a fraudulent art teacher who ends up shacking up and living with these, this old Japanese couple who are also frauds. And they're sort of doing this correspondence school of teaching would-be artists. I mean, this short story, whether or not it was considered unsuccessful or not as critically acclaimed as the banana fish story, I loved so much. It was an absolute treat. You know, in a lot of these works, J.D. Salinger is um, is expressing, uh, expressing some philosophy, like uh, some mystical philosophical ideas. Uh, many that come from Vedanta Hinduism, from Zen Buddhism, um, and that's all great. You know, it is great to be enlightened and spiritually advanced. That theme comes very strongly in the last one, Teddy, which has a hell of a twist at the end, but it was very entertaining. Um, but some of these stories I just like to read for fun and, and to enjoy the characters for who they are. Not trying to enlighten myself, just to enjoy the story. Uh, that's more and more as I read. I think when I first got into, little side tangent, when I first got into reading, it was to educate and enlighten myself. But now more and more, I just really, and I still do love that. I'm always looking for nuggets of wisdom. I've got a lot of highlighted passages um, in this, which I'll share one in just a second. But more and more, I just love reading stories for the story's sake and reading about these characters. And then, of course, you can never get away from the reflection that these characters cast back on your own life and the people that you know and the decisions that you've made. And you have to ask yourself, am I bitter about the person I married? Uh, am I traumatized about this? Am I disillusioned? Am I, fr am, am I as snobbish as this character? So it's, reading stories is a joy. It also gives you that... Uh, self-reflection um, but there are there are passages there are words that do make you stop and think and in the last story Teddy there is a precocious uh, genius 10 year old boy who's just running circles around these adults that are interviewing him on philosophy on education and he makes this one line he says life is a gift horse and I love that Lying. It's very simple. Life is a gift horse. Well, if you've ever heard that quote, uh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. The idea being that uh, if if someone gives you a horse, right, that's great. You, you got a horse. You should just be thankful. But, you know, some people, they want to assess the value of the horse. So they look in the horse's mouth and you can tell the horse's age and perhaps its health by looking at its gums and its teeth. So you shouldn't do that, right? Especially in front of the person who gives you the horse because just to have a horse is a, as a gift is, is phenomenal. But it's kind of rude to like look at its teeth and its gums. But so life is a gift horse, which is we've all been given this life and it's amazing to be alive. But a lot of us will somehow like ruin, and I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to preach to you, but sometimes like I've felt that I don't appreciate the gift of life when I'm really assessing it and measuring it and trying to like determine its value. It sort of takes away. And in that story, Teddy, there is this big, um, big debate between him and this older, more intelligent, uh, more mature man, although he doesn't really come off as all that mature, uh, between sort of the intellectual analyzer part of our personality and the sort more of intuitive just flowing with nature part of our our being and it's sort of a mind-bending conversation uh, if you've never read uh, much Buddhism or Hindu thought or have not taken psychedelics but if you have then I think you'll appreciate it I I find reading another side tangent. I, I find reading psychology or reading philosophy, or reading religion, to be great on its own. But I always do like it when it comes through in a in a story. It, it's, I find stories that that give you the same philosophy that you might get in a in a textbook or a religious book. I find that 
the story that has the same philosophy or ideas is a much more digestible package, much more enjoyable uh, packaging uh, for the same ideas, if that makes any sense. So J.D. Salinger's The Nine Stories, published in 1953, nine very different stories, all of them very different. Um, it was, I believe, the first work of his that came out after he became super famous uh, from the massive positive reception that he received in 1951 with The Catcher in the Rye. So after that, I read on Wikipedia that he became very reclusive. Uh, so I don't know how that influenced this collection of the stories. Some of these stories were written, as I said, years before. I have uh, read also that um, you can see sort of the, the gradual changes within J.D. Salinger's own, own mind and heart uh, from the stories as they are as they are written from uh, one point in, of his life shortly after World War II, where he's pretty pretty banged up emotionally from that. And then it, as he becomes more positive and more accepting of life. Um, I will say my only criticism, this is my only criticism, is that uh, if you're not... Uh, like, for example, Teddy, the book that I was just raving to you about, reading some of those quotes, Life is Gift Horse, that has some of this this uh, Eastern philosophy packaged into it, it is highly spiritual. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, it extols the virtue of being detached from this world, to not cling to the body, to not cling to life, which is, you know, uh, something that a lot of wise men of the past have said. But, um, you know, you might not be at a point in your life where, where, where you, you're willing to detach or you want to detach. Maybe attachments are something that is important for you. So, I, you know, I like, I like philosophy and, and spiritual ideas, but sometimes I feel that it's not always the right thing uh, for me to put on at the moment. Like, for right now, I love my attachments. I like, I like being here in this world. Um, don't necessarily want to detach. If that makes any sense to you, write it down in the comments. And I thank you so much for joining me on this book review on this lovely day. I will see you next time. My name is Ryan Freeman. Bye.